、えー、よろしくお願い。Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming today.、Uh, I am Tanaka,、uh, and Akito Takanaka, senior staff writer, Nikkei. I would like to speak English from here onward. Nikkei Global Management Forum.、Um, I would like to introduce our next、uh, speaker.、Uh, she is a co founder of a company called Grab.、Um, most of you may know Grab as a、uh, ride sharing application, but in fact,、uh, we'll hear from her presentation. But Grab does much more than that.、Um, It is one of the fastest growing、um, internet company in、uh, Southeast Asia and one of the most highly valued、um, company, uh, private company in Southeast Asia as well. So please welcome、um, Ms. Tan Hui Li,、uh, co founder of Grab. Yoroshiku o n e g a i s h i m a s Konnichiwa. That is unfortunately the extent of my Japanese. So,、uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to be speaking in English and Ego right now.、Um, so, firstly, thank you so much for having me today, sharing the panel with some amazing leaders and、uh, thinkers in the world. Today,、um, Nikkei kindly asked us to share a bit more on how we at Grab are trying to use technology to change and reshape the future of society. And that's thankfully. A journey we've been able to take and do for the past seven years. We were founded in 2012. It feels like ages ago, and hopefully, we've been able to continue to improve and increase the quality of life for the 650 million Southeast Asians we're trying to serve. Before I share what we've been doing, how we've been doing it, I would love to. Do a quick summary of what is Southeast Asia and why is it so different. Quick show of hands, who has been to Singapore? Yes. In many different ways, Singapore is extremely modern. I would like to think that the food is as good as Tokyo's, and maybe Singapore is slightly more hot and humid than you know, Tokyo. Now, who has been to Myanmar? I am very impressed. I was not expecting this. There were quite a few hands that went up. Between Singapore and Myanmar, you can see quite different economies, backgrounds, and backdrops. And of course, in Southeast Asia, you also have everything in between. Just looking at the Philippines, you see the skyscrapers, you also see Less organized housing. And in Vietnam, my favorite, favorite scene. I can visually remember the sounds and what it feels like trying to cross any junction in Hanoi. Looks like that, especially during you know, peak period. So, if you were to look at those pictures, basically what Southeast Asia is, is a very diverse and a very nice way of saying sometimes chaotic and messy region. But to us, especially at Grab, we call this place home. And where others see chaos, we see opportunity. And this was the place we decided that there was much to continue building and use technology to unlock the future potential of Southeast Asia in ways that had not been done before. Some of the interesting facts about Southeast Asia the median age. Of Southeast Asians is a grand total of 30 years old. I, in the region, am considered old. It is a success factor for me.、Right. In Southeast Asia, there are more mobile phones than there are bank accounts. And in Southeast Asia, the latest reports estimate that the digital economy. Is going to triple by 2025. In just a few years, this is how much technology is impacting and moving the region forward. So, we are extremely thankful to be able to play a part in that. So, within that land of opportunity, this is what Grab has been doing over the last seven years. We started off as a transportation mobility platform. Our core promise then was to create safer, And more efficient transportation solutions. Since then, 
we now thankfully have become Southeast Asia's number one food delivery platform and also the preferred e-wallets player for the entire region. In many different ways, basically what we're trying to do is to provide what we call a super app, which is in one app, the ability to access your everyday most critical daily needs, right? And that's why it's called the everyday super app. I'll play a short GIF just to show what it looks like. So from the home screen, you can select transport, and this is an example of what it looks like, a transport booking. You can select cars, taxis, this is food. Choose your bubble tea, it's a fantastic thing in Southeast Asia, lots of sugar in there, right? And then choose your local cuisine. There's also the ability to pay by grab pay, right? This is the e-wallet system. There's also the ability to continue to collect rewards points and convert them into things like Samsung S, uh, S10s. And also the ability via partners to book tickets or book your next hotel for a trip. Right. So this is what we've been able to develop and serve to eight countries in 339 cities to date. It is quite a mouthful to share, but I actually would like to pause and just step, for, step back for a moment to share less around the what we have been doing and more around the why. So seven years ago, when Anthony and I were fortunate enough to go to HBS with Pro Professor Takeuchi, um, I actually took one of his classes, and I think he's too busy with an admin-related <laughs> problem right now, though I'm trying to give him a, a very, very big thankful call out. We were very fortunate to also sit in a class called Building Businesses at the Base of the Pyramid, which is around how do you build businesses with double bottom lines? Because that was what we wanted to do. We didn't want to build a company just purely based for profit. We wanted to also create social impact. In this dimension, how have we been performing? Just last month, we launched our very first social impact report. And this is our commitment to be transparent and accountable to everyone that we serve around what that double bottom line looks like. Some highlights from that report show that we've contributed in just a span of one year, $5.8 billion in direct impact to all of the, uh, the countries that we serve. And this number is growing. Additionally, approximately 9 million micro-entrepreneurs have cumulatively earned that income on a Grab platform. This could be a driver partner, a merchant partner, an agent partner, you know, a food merchant, a payments merchant. 9 million micro-entrepreneurs to date have helped, use, uh, sorry, have helped increase their livelihoods via the Grab platform. That's approximately one in 70 Southeast Asians. And what's more powerful to us is the fact that most of these entrepreneurs did not have access to sustainable, viable income. In Indonesia, approximately 20 to 30% of our driver and merchant partners did not have a sustainable job or income source before they became a Grab driver or agent. That's the kind of impact that we continue to want to drive forward for the region. We're also looking to make the invisible visible. To date, we've helped more than 1.7 million people create their first ever bank accounts. 70% of Southeast Asia is underbanked and unbanked. So this is a huge challenge for us. At the same time, we're also trying to increase the access to financial services by making these invisible people visible. What do we mean by this? Because most of Southeast Asia's economy is done via cash, a lot of people don't have previous earnings histories and salary slips. So they can't even go get a small white goods loan to buy a washing machine or a fridge.
Numbers are fantastic, but actually what's more important is actually the faces behind each story, behind its number. I mentioned the number 9 million micro-entrepreneurs just now. Let me just take one example of one story of this amazing guy called Bud Rudy that we've been able to help empower over the years. He joined us in 2015 as a grab bike driver. Back before that, he was a construction worker. He was a father of two, struggling to make ends meet. Since joining Grab, his earnings has been consistently about double to triple of what he used to earn as a construction worker. And it's also been consistent jobs instead of one-off jobs, depending on what's being built at that point in time. His income increased and because he got access to his very first bank account, we were also able to partner him with a financial institution to give him access to a loan to buy a second motorbike, which he then gave to his nephew to earn more income for the family as well. From the second motorbike, he then helped put down a loan for his mom for a house. And four years on, look at that, that guy, the confidence. He now drives a grab car, and he's been equipped with all the necessary tools to earn more and consistently just provide economic mobility for him and his family. These are the stories that truly drive us forward each day. I'm running short of time. I do apologize. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit more on how we got here. Partnerships has been a key critical role for us, whether it's been with public governments or private partners. I'd like, also like to do a shout out to um, some amazing Japanese partners. Of course, we've had uh, the gracious uh, investments from Masasan SoftBank. We've also had strategic partnerships with Toyota, Honda, and also Credit Saison on the financial services uh, front. The reason for this is because we take a partnership first approach. Very simply, we realize that we can't do everything alone. We don't want to, and we're not smart enough to. So why not partner with the best global players? That's one. Secondly, technology. The only reason why all of this is possible is because we're able to use the latest technology and AI to create empowerment at scale. To date, we've accumulated more than four petabytes of data. And every single day, 40 terabytes of data is being added. That's about like 10,000 hours of high definition video on Netflix. That's, that's more than I could ever watch in my lifetime, created every single day. And we use this. This is just a snapshot of what it looks like in Jakarta, the city center of Indonesia, at 9 PM on a day. Each one of those blips are bookings. And we're trying to use AI to more smartly allocate and match the right driver with the right passenger based on their different needs. I will go through this a bit faster. Apologies, because I'm short on time. Um, we're also using this data to ultimately make the most personalized experience, recommending, let's say, your favorite food at this point in time. If I were to click open lunch in the office, my grab food would recommend sushi to me, because they know I like Japanese food. right? Or how to use AI to smartly solve problems that had not been solved before, like the multiple languages in Southeast Asia that there are too many of to share and understand. So these are just some examples of how we've been able to grow at scale. Stepping back, if you were to remember Bart Rudy, that guy, there are millions and millions more stories like his that continue to give us inspiration to want to do more at Grab. Um, we are extremely, extremely humbled, happy, and thankful to be able to become the platform that empowers more. And that has always been our vision and our mission as a company. Because of this, when we launched our social impact report, we said, hey, yes, we've been able to achieve a lot of great things today, but we don't want to stand still. Having a bottom line is literally baked into our business model. Nothing that I've shared about what we're doing is, is net new. It's been something that we've been doing ever since we started the company seven years ago. We just now get to share the numbers. So by 2025, we're hoping to achieve this additional milestones, right? 
whether it's around improving digital literacy to help empower you know, micro entrepreneurs who were previously doing everything with pen and paper with more digitization, and also helping to develop tech skills for the future. We know that if Grab succeeds and when Grab succeeds, Southeast Asia succeeds as well, and vice versa, which is why everything that we do is a virtuous cycle, and we're looking for more continued partners to join us on that journey. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for your presentation, and I'll be asking a few questions uh, regarding the presentation. Um, first of all, as we saw, quite a lot of people have um, traveled to Singapore, and I'm sure many of them used Grab. And uh, we, as a traveler, view Grab as a ride-sharing app. But actually, with your presentation, we understood that you do e-wallets, payments, personal finance, um, you even do food deliveries. Um, and this notion of super app that you presented in your presentation is relatively new in the Japanese um, mobile internet space. Could you sort of explain what's the importance of being a super app? And what are other functions or services that Grab might add um, into your super app in the future? Great question. Um, it's really important to know that when we started on the super app journey, uh, developing a platform where we could put different partners and bring them on board to give them access to our customers as well. It wasn't because we wanted to become a super app. Uh, very simply, what happened was after about five years of you know, be becoming the preferred transport solution for mm -hmm. our Southeast Asian customers, our customers were starting to tell us, hey, Grab, can you deliver food for me? Hey, Grab, could you launch your e-wallet because I hate having to carry wash, uh, you know, uh, cash around all the time and I don't have a credit card. Um, so it's because of the customer needs that we soon realized many, many different requests were coming. We could hear consistent themes on the big ones, particularly like food and payments. And we said, hmm, OK, we now have the ability to evolve into the next chapter. Which ones do we want to pick? And how best do we surface them to our customers to use? The quick conclusion from that was that instead of asking them to download a second, third, fourth, fifth app, why not put it all in one app so they have a seamless experience? And that generally is a super app, which is one app with multiple functionalities, one app that they know if they want to get anything done every single day, they just click on grab, and they'll have fingertip access to it. And new areas that you might venture in? So um, we've clearly been venturing into many recently, yes. but there are, of course, more that we can provide access to. The underlying thesis of what we prioritize is everyday most critical needs okay. that technology can help to unlock. Okay. And for us, when we started with transportation, it was because there was a bigger need and inefficiency. We see those needs in areas like healthcare as well. Okay. And with that, we're actually partnering with a, a company called Ping An Good Doctor. They're amazing, they're big, they use technology for all sorts of things to bring accessibility to healthcare to people who did not have it before. We are also looking to different partners to improve our financial services offerings. Context is the majority of Southeast Asia, more than 90% is still cash-based. 70% is you know, unbanked or not banked. And because of that, much of the Southeast Asian uh, income pyramid has no access to anything like microloans, has no access to insurance. And what we're doing is creating micro, you know, little affordable pockets of that to give it to them. Interesting. Great. Thank you. Um, and another interesting um, as aspect about Grab is that you're partnering with a, a lot of Japanese companies, um, SoftBank, Vision Fund, um, Toyota, Honda. Um, could you share us what value are they bringing to Grab's um, you know, success and growth, and what are you providing them um, as, as in return of quite a sum of investment? Yep. Uh, before I answer the question, I think firstly, for us, we look for the best global partners. Okay. So we also partner with companies like Microsoft, mm -hmm. Booking.com for hotel bookings. We also partner with local banks, the best local banks, 
uh, in each country, for example, Maybank, UOB, KBank. Reason for this is we're literally trying to understand what our specific customer needs and who has the best solution for it. And if they exist in the world somewhere around us and believe that we can work together to achieve that longer term vision, we'll happily you know, shake hands, okay. sign a piece of paper and work together in the long term. And when that happened with SoftBank and Toyota, for example, I think with SoftBank, uh, Masa-san has been a fantastic, amazing uh, investor for many years now. He saw the potential of Southeast Asia. He saw the potential of Grab. And uh, it's actually been multiple uh, journeys with him. And I think hopefully many, many more years as well. For SoftBank's relationship, we continue to get, of course, financial investment from them. More, more importantly, access to their networks okay. and their operational financial expertise. So these are the portfolio networks of the Vision Fund. Yeah, sorry, could you say that? Portfolio, so there are other companies that SoftBank has invested in? Or, for example, uh, Toyota or okay. Credit Saison. And like, I, I think it's because everybody trusts SoftBank okay. uh, that, of course, then other relationships are more easily struck as well. When it comes to Toyota, we're working with them specifically on you know, IoT, the concept of how telematics, big data, AI can help in making car maintenance, making insurance safety uh, more smart. And we have multiple pilots of them going on in Southeast Asia. And hopefully what we provide to them is access to the market, understanding of local customers that are very different in nuance, and also hopefully a strategic partner who wants to just shape and innovate for the future. Okay, very interesting. And I guess related to this question um, is that, so apparently in the, in the auto industry, which is pretty big in Japan, um, there are two major technology trends um, that may disrupt or may, may help the industry. And those are electronic vehicles and autonomous vehicles. Um, from your perspective, as, as a company that provides the largest uh, ride sharing service in Southeast Asia, what is sort of the vision of the mobility that Grab sees at this moment? You know, there are the three things that we care about in the future of mobility. One is it needs to be shared, mm -hmm. it needs to be seamless, mm -hmm. and it needs to be smart. Uh, when we talk about shared, I think there's a lot of that concept on the fact that there's idle capacity in each car mm -hmm. or each bus or you know whatever that you're looking at. And we're investing into, you know, better technology and AI to improve services like what we call GrabShare, so sharing service, so more than one customer can use the same car if they have a similar route, or even Grab Hitch, where people already own a car and they're gonna drive into work every single day, how can they do social carpooling? That's around shared. Uh, about around seamless, I think ultimately, because there's so many different customer segments that we're trying to provide solutions to, there will be no one perfect transportation mode for all. And what we need to do is more seamlessly connect all of them together. Whether it's cars with public transportation or something that we've been investing to recently called wheels, it's the PMDs and e-scooters. Okay. Uh, it will help you get from your home to the supermarket or your home to the closest uh, train station. Bring it all together is, in a seamless way is what will be the future. Um, Shared, seamless, and smart, yes. Okay. And smart, of course, is I think our cities of today were designed for the technologies of yesterday. Okay. How do we help the cities of tomorrow design for the future of tomorrow as well? With that, we partner with global players like UN, the Pulse Labs, to look into specifically in Indonesia, how can we smartly look at what causes traffic? How could we solve it if we designed uh, the roads and turnings different way? We also work with uh, local partners. For example, we have a partnership with Cinemas. Mm -hmm. They're a big conglomerate in Indonesia where they're building a new s development. It's literally a new city. And they want it to be a smart city. And we're working together to figure out, uh, figure out what are the best vehicle modes of transport. How do you connect it more seamlessly and how can you use data to build the infrastructure smartly? Great. I mean, Singapore is a very organized city. There are tons of cars, but not so much traffic jam compared from the, the rest of Asia. I mean, if you go to other countries in Asia, traffic jam is, I guess, one of the biggest problems that they have uh, as a city. 
So do you talk with government officials, um, city people, to sort of solve these problems with, as, you know, as a service provider? Or? Exactly. Uh, and those are reflections of some of the partnerships that we have with uh, global NGOs or local governments. Um, just some other unique local innovations that we have. I think I shared a picture of Vietnam in one of the early slides where you saw lots and lots of bikers with buses and cars all trying to go against each other. I don't know how it works, but it works. Right. Um, when we realized that countries like Vietnam, everybody is used to using a motorbike. And the reason they do it is because it's the fastest way of traveling, it's the cheapest way of traveling. So one of our very first innovations as a company many years ago was to launch Grab Bike, okay. which is ride hailing on two wheels. I think that idea in Japan would be extremely scary. Think about jumping into the back seat of a, grab, a bike driver you don't know, putting on a helmet that says Grab and cutting through traffic. Yep. It's my favorite mode of transportation because okay. I hate wasting time. Interesting. Um, now let's talk about the global strategy. Um, it's really fascinating to see how you tackled into different markets. They're called Southeast Asia, but it's a totally different region, totally different culture, um, different income levels and whatnot. Um, and another interesting thing was that Grab acquired Uber, one of the, the biggest rideshare company in Silicon Valley's Southeast Asia business back in 2018, was it? Um, how, why do you think Grab was so successful in such a diverse Southeast Asian market? And is there any possibility that you might go beyond Southeast Asia and explore some other global markets? Multiple questions. So I'll yeah, answer yeah. the first part sure. first. Um, I think, firstly, let's not, uh, I always believe in luck. We were very lucky to find the opportunity that we had at that point in time where we really understood the local customer needs the best. I think the concept of hyper-localization. I'll give you one simple example on how we differentiated and why it was important. Um, we started our business with an operating model of accepting cash. Mm -hmm. Many people globally think it's a very inefficient way of working, but to us there's no other way because all of Southeast Asia evolved around cash. That was seven years ago, and now we're trying to solve that cash problem with our, our financial services and payments wallets. Secondly, there's an example of, um, you know, Uber loves to do these ice cream promotions and campaigns. They're super successful in the States. And Southeast Asia is super hot and humid, so ice cream melts. Okay. So instead of doing ice cream campaigns, we did durian campaigns. Yeah. I know, I, I, I heard bet, it. Uh. I bet nobody in Silicon Valley will think about this, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Even the hotels don't want you to bring this very smelly food yeah. into the lobby. But that's what really drives Southeast Asia forward. Every single year, that campaign sells out, and it gets bigger and bigger, and we think it's too much. There's too much durian. And it's like, no, it's not enough. Right, so those are some simple examples, but of course, in every single decision that we make, that concept of just understanding our customers have enabled us to create a differentiated product. Uh, now, on the second question of would we go anywhere else, um, a lot of folks here have been asking me, will we think of Japan? I do apologize. What makes us truly grab is the fact that we do know Southeast Asia okay. uh, extremely well. It's also an untapped you know, gold mine of opportunity right now. So for us, that is where we call home, where we're focused, and where all of our next uh, generation's worth of innovations are focused on. Great, thank you. Um, we're, I would like to keep on asking questions, but um, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Let me ask one last question. Um, so you and Anthony uh, started Grab, um, was it in Harvard Business School, or? The idea, the idea was came in Harvard there. Business School and then made it into one of the largest startup companies, I suppose, in the world. Um, now, as an entrepreneur, what, what, what Japan and the Japanese entrepreneurs are trying to do is do the exact same thing. They want to go global. They want to build, build a great company. Now, do you have any advice or messages to the, to the Japanese entrepreneur and startup communities in Japan? Um, I'll just use my personal experience. Okay. The only reason, I guess, why we're fortunate enough to still be here seven years later is because we were very, very accustomed to hearing the word no. You're crazy. You're stupid. 
ETC, ETC, ETC. Okay. Uh, especially during the early days and even you know, throughout the years. I think the most important thing is to find something that you're truly, truly passionate about. Of course, listen to feedback, but also know that when your heart and your gut is calling, uh, don't be swayed by what your parents say. My mom used to complain a lot. Not less now. But OK, uh, don't be swayed by what others are saying. Because if it's truly that important to you, you will spend every day, evening, weekend, thinking about it and working on it without the concept of feeling like it's a burden on yourself. And that willingness to try to fail and to do more is, I think, the only thing that has enabled us to continue going and evolving to date. Great, wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Please do come again. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Tan. Ms. Tan and also Tanaka-san, thank you so much. That concludes this morning's session. The presenters, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. The lunch outside the venue on the left-hand side. Go up escalator to the third floor, and we have lunch prepared for you in the Fuji room. Please uh, bring all of your valuable belonging. The receivers for the simultaneous translation, please leave them on the chairs. So this room in the entrance, there are some booth exhibitions.